Today's true crime. Where is missing mother Jennifer Dulos? The devoted mom vanished into thin air after dropping her five kids off at school on the morning of May 24th amidst a brutal custody battle with her estranged husband, Fotus Dulos. Rumors of foul play soon emerged, rocking the once tranquil town of New Canaan, Connecticut to its core. Take a look. She would not be reported missing by friends and family until 7 p.m. Her SUV would be found near her home only an hour later, sending the Connecticut town of New Canaan reeling. First, the search for the missing mother of five, Jennifer Dulos, which is now entering day 12. As police began digging into Jennifer's movements on that fateful day, they say they began to uncover evidence that Jennifer's estranged husband, Fotis, was lying in wait at Jennifer's home the day she disappeared. Authorities reported surveillance camera in the neighborhood capturing someone matching the description of Fotis, driving a truck, and putting garbage bags into multiple trash bins. Detectives later found clothing in the trash with Jennifer Dulos' blood on them. Fotis Dulos and his girlfriend, Michelle Traconis, were arrested in June and charged with tampering or fabricating physical evidence and hindering prosecution. Arrest warrants stated that officers found multiple areas of suspected blood in Jennifer Dulos' home. Both were released on bonds. After her release, Michelle Traconis began to cooperate with police. She made damning statements and admitted to lying in previous police interviews. The investigation's focus turned to the red Toyota pickup truck that Dulos was allegedly driving when Jennifer disappeared. It was reported that Dulos and Traconis had the truck thoroughly detailed and Dulos repeatedly badgered the truck's owner, who was one of Dulos's employees, to replace the back seats. The employee did replace the seats, but saved the originals, which he gave to police. Dulos and Traconis were rearrested the week of September 1st on charges of evidence tampering. They were again released on bond. Joining me now is Nancy Grace, former prosecutor and host of Oxygen's Injustice with Nancy Grace. So here's the deal. Fotis and Michelle Traconis have been charged again. Why do you think it is taking police so long to make their okay. case? Dr. Ross, I'm just like you. I'm about to jump out of my skin for some charge regarding murder to go down. Both times, Fotis Dulos and his girlfriend, his lover, Michelle Traconis, have been arrested. It's not for kidnap. It's not for murder. It's for tampering with evidence. Refresher, Jennifer Dulos, Connecticut mom of five, goes missing. She drops her children off like I do, except she's in a fancy suburban. I'm in a beat-up minivan. That's okay with me. <laughs> That's about 8.05. She then misses several, many appointments, and her friend girls start calling. Where are you? They report her missing, okay? Her car, her Suburban, is found parked near a big park. Cops go into her garage. They immediately, with the naked eye, see blood. There's a lot of blood involved in this. The first tampering with evidence husband and girlfriend are charged with, they're caught on video surveillance. Listen to this. Caught on video surveillance, and she later admits it's them, okay? Mm -hmm. So I don't need NASA to clarify this video for me because she, the girlfriend, the lover, has told cops, according to this arrest warrant, that it was them. Going to 30 trash receptacles, 30, getting rid of evidence. And all those trash cans, they find a bloody T-shirt, a, a vineyard vine that we think Jennifer was wearing, bloody sponges, bloody mop. The blood matches Jennifer Farber Dulos. There's no way around it. I believe their working theory is she drops the children, comes home, Dulos, their theory, is waiting, lying in wait. Fotis, the husband's waiting. Fotis Dulos. Mm -hmm. That there is a brutal confrontation in the garage because of the quantity of blood. And he has his wait for it, his employee's Toyota Tacoma that he took without consent. There's blood, Jennifer's blood, in the back seat. Mm. He orders the employee to change out, rip out the back seat and replace it with his Porsche seats. The employee keeps the seats. They test positive for Jennifer's blood. But no murder charge. They got to wait. They're looking for the body. That's what they're waiting on. Oh, that's what's holding it up. But 
All right. Well, I, 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 they've, they've done a lot of things between when she was allegedly hurt and... You should see this arrest warrant. It's very detailed. Well, let's go through the defense's arguments here. They're saying, it's some wild theories, one is that Jennifer's real life is that, the, <clears throat> is that she's a gone girl, that she ran away, right? A real-life gone girl, referring to the book and the movie where a woman fakes her death to frame her husband. I just hope they keep talking, and I pray to God that when this ever does go to trial, that Fotis Dula says that on the stand. I, it's just nothing would make me happier. First, they say that she, Jennifer, is still alive, number one. Then they say that she, Jennifer, wrote a gone girl type novel, and that now she's living it out. Third, they're saying, okay, forget about all that. Now we think it was revenge suicide. Their theory is that Jennifer killed herself to spite Fotis Dulos. Just know this, you know it nearly killed me as much as I love you and your staff, Dr. Oz, when I flew up here because I missed John Davies' very first soccer game with his school. You know what? Five children, many of them so young, they will have no memory of their mother. No memory at all because of this. But what happens to those poor little kids now? I mean, they, they, oh, if they... I, that's a whole nother can of worms, Dr. Oz. They're with the maternal grandmother, okay? She wisely has them in a different jurisdiction, so Fotis Dulos can't get out of the state. She's in Manhattan, he is back in Connecticut. And just to spite Granny, just to get it, Granny, he makes a legal motion for Granny to be legally, mentally evaluated just to irritate her. I mean, it never ends. But I hope they come up with all these theories at trial. Gone girl, still alive, revenge suicide. And it's all blaming the victim. Um, but long story short, why not just divorce? Why go through all of this over money? Oh yeah, he owes her parents $1.2 million. Yeah. He does? Yes, he does. His construction company wasn't all that, apparently. So you put in the money, the divorce, the children. And it's part of a controlling behavior, Dr. Oz. You're better at, at understanding that than me. He could have the affairs and the flings, but then when she filed for divorce, and you know what? She told the judge at the time of the divorce, I'm afraid he'll kill me. She, she told the she judge sure that? Did. She sure did. At the time when everything was happening regarding the divorce, she said to a judge, I'm afraid he'll kill me. And now she's gone. Coming up, what Jennifer's life with Fotis was really like. Stay with us. We're back with the heartbreaking story that has the nation riveted. Beloved Connecticut mother of five, Jennifer Dulos, has been missing since she dropped her kids off at school on May 24th. Jennifer's estranged husband, Fotis Dulos, and his girlfriend, Michelle Traconis, were arrested for evidence tampering for the second time and are both out on bail again. Joining me now is correspondent Morris Gavacampo, who's been following this so carefully for us. So Fotos' defense team has requested the release of Jennifer's medical records for the second time. What is going on? What are they trying to prove? Yeah, so what's interesting here is that Fotis has gotten his hands on a copy of Jennifer's medical bills. So it's a bill for $14,000, and they're requesting the medical records associated with those bills. They say that the billing code that was used is for testing that could have been for pregnancy or for a terminal illness. So they're basically suggesting suggesting that Jennifer was terminally ill. She didn't want Fotis to get custody of the children when she died, and so she ran away to frame him. That's the implication here. All right, so New Canaan and the surrounding towns are still reeling from Jennifer's disappearance. We sent Mara to Connecticut to talk to some people who got to know Jennifer during a very vulnerable time in her life. Take a look. So tell me about um, how you came to know Jennifer. I got my estimate request that, that she was looking um, to move. She was nervous, you know. During our, our walkthrough, she said, you know, if my husband does come here while you're here, you know, you'll have to, you know, sneak out or leave or, or something. Did she seem afraid of him? Um, yeah, she, she was worried that, that um, if he came home and saw me there, that there would be problems. What did she tell you about the circumstances of the move? Uh, it was more of an escape than it was a move. Yeah. So how did you hear the news that she was missing? She goes, did you hear about uh, Jennifer Dulos? I said, no, what's up? She's, she's moving again? And she goes. It's okay, honey. 
I think my hope was that she ran and that she just got someplace safe. The mother part of me said she wouldn't go anywhere without those children. Even the Dulos' real estate agent and one of Fotis' business associates expressed concern for Jennifer. I know Fotis from a professional relationship of listing his home in Farmington, and we've done other work for him trying to find buyers that want to build his houses. But our job is to sell a home, and we represent Jennifer, and we represent Fotis still. How would you describe her temperament? Beautiful lady. Absolutely. Very soft. She was very inwardly focused towards taking care of the kids, where I think Fotis was more um, you know, more outside of the home. And you've been in touch with him since all of this began. I spoke with him, uh, I think within an hour after he bailed out of jail. He was ready to go back to business. So he was asking you about work immediately after getting exactly out of jail. Right. Exactly right. And say he's not behaving as I would behave. If the mother of my kids was missing, I would be doing everything I could to find her. You just saw on that tape, there's a lot of emotions surrounding Jennifer's disappearance. Let's go back to those movers. So they've relocated her twice now, mm -hmm. and they got to know her. Yeah. You know, this is all happening since she separated from him. Yeah. What did they say about her demeanor? In terms of her demeanor, they say she was extremely fearful. She was scared of her husband, and in fact, she called them several times to reschedule her move, crying because she just couldn't have her husband there. We're back with the latest on missing mom, Jennifer Dulos. Connecticut authorities believe Jennifer's estranged husband, Fotos Dulos, was lying in wait at her home the day she disappeared. But they still haven't located the mother of five who was last seen on May 24th. Carrie Luft, Jennifer's close friend, is serving as Jennifer's family spokesperson. She joins us now. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. How hard have these last few months been? Well, I appreciate your asking. They've been terrible these past more than 100 days now, uh, have definitely been everyone's worst nightmare. You've got the difficult task of, of helping with the kids. They're, the kids just are five children, age eight to 13. We're not gonna show their pictures. I don't think it's appropriate Thank to you. traumatize these kids any further, but they just started school. How, how do they cope? How do they get through it? Well, I'd have to say that the kids inspire me every day. They are incredibly resilient. I think they're helping one another through this in an incredible way. So it's been our priority to provide them with some semblance of a normal life within what is so terribly not a normal situation. I mean, no one could predict this could have happened or how to cope with an event like this. What, what do you want America to know about your friend Jennifer? I want them to know that she's absolutely devoted to her children. Their health and happiness and growth as individuals has always been her number one priority. Her life is about creating security and stability and opportunity for them. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, I want them to know that she is brilliant and funny and lovely and gracious and the best friend anybody could ever hope for. Wish I'd had a chance to meet her. Fotis' legal team is throwing out a bunch of theories, and you've heard all these, but I'd love to hear your thoughts around them. One claim is that she's like the, the book and movie Gone Girl, right? That she's just disappeared and framed him. Thoughts? <sighs> My thoughts are that it's completely absurd on many levels. Uh, first and foremost, given Jennifer's character and her behavior in her life, um, she's an amazingly conscientious person. She checks in, she lets you know where she's headed, when to expect her back. She would never, ever miss an appointment without calling in advance. So the notion that she could have disappeared voluntarily and left her children is, is completely unfathomable. And I know that her children know she would never have done that. But to put that out into the media repeatedly is, I think, incredibly cruel and irresponsible. 
Fotos' legal team is now trying to get access to Jennifer's medical records. And they argue, they have billing reports. They argue that she had a series of ultrasounds, which you can tell from the bill, before she disappeared. Thoughts? Well, I guess my first thought is that we have laws that protect the privacy of people's medical records, first and foremost. Uh, beyond that, uh, Jennifer has always taken excellent care of her health. We know that she was in excellent health as of May 24th. So there seems to be absolutely no factual basis for this at all. They, 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 they're claiming that she lost a lot of weight. You're, you're close to her, you spent a lot of time with her. Had she lost a lot of weight from her, the police report says she's 120 pounds, the missing person report. Correct. You think that was an accurate number? Had she lost, I guess I, threw, I saw all kinds of numbers being thrown up by their team. Well, you know, again, I think putting numbers out there without anything to back them up is irresponsible. But beyond that, certainly she's been under incredible stress. Uh, as a physician, you know that sometimes a common response to stress is loss of appetite. So had she lost some weight? Sure. But I think the bigger issue is that none of this has anything to do with the evidence behind her disappearance. You mentioned that Jennifer had some fears. Did she ever express fear to you for her life? Yes. She did? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Now, who was she afraid of? I'd prefer not to elaborate. Okay. Thank you. Carrie, what do you think happened to Jennifer? Well, the, the evidence that the police investigators have made public indicates that she was the victim of a violent attack. We know something awful has happened to her. Does, does the family acknowledge that, do you think? Well, we all acknowledge that something terrible has happened to her and that she's been missing for more than three months. If I could put photos in this chair where I'm sitting, what would you ask him? What would you ask Fotis, her husband? Uh, the only thing I would have to say to him is, where is she? Where is Jennifer? Where is she? You think he knows? Yes, I do. What do you miss the most about your friend Jennifer? I miss her voice. I miss the sound of her voice. I miss the lilt of her voice. I miss her laugh. I miss her sighs. I'm sure Jennifer's very proud to have you as a friend. Well, thank you. I'm proud to have her as a friend. Thanks for being here. Well, thank you for having me. We reached out to Photos Dulos's Defense team for comment, we did not hear back. He has previously denied any involvement in the disappearance of Jennifer Dulos. If you have any information that you think could be helpful in any way, please go to DrOz.com slash Crime Hunters and we'll have the contact information for the proper authorities there so you can speak to them. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss out on new videos to live the good life.